Hi everyone, welcome back. Tom Zagveya back again for Cult of Athena with another Blade review. This is actually going to be a little bit different. This is going to be a tabletop review. So let's get to it. Alright, today we have the Albion St. Maurice sword. This is a very special sword because this is one of Albion's swords from their museum line. And what the museum line is, if you are not familiar with it, is they recreate swords, artifacts rather, from their point of balance all the way to the construction as close as possible to how they used to be made. Obviously Albion uses the 6150 high carbon steel for their blades and very excellent steel to be using, but as far as point of balance and all that, they keep it very, very close to how they were, they, they were made back then. Let's get some panning up in the blade. Notice on this side, you'll see the crusade type cross some other details right there. Albion's logo is beautifully stamped in. Actually, we have I never even realized that there's a crown for the royal, not the royal line, for the uh, museum line there. That's awesome. You'll notice the tip. This is something that really struck me when I uh, saw this. The tip is very rounded off. I believe that is if you're dealing with armor and you need to thrust through armor, your, uh, your tip is not too... Uh, you know, too pointy to where it's going to snap off. You actually even see that even in the Roman gladiuses, where the tip is very broad at the very end. So if you did have to penetrate armor, your tip doesn't snap off. Uh, we also saw that in the armor videos that uh, we just did. The first part of that is up on the site. So go ahead and click the link below for that for any armor, anti-armor videos you want to see for the YouTube channel. This is the date of the sword. This is supposed to be around the 13th century. And uh, this is a really, really big sword. Um, as far as the actual blade length itself, you're looking at somewhere between 36 or 36 and an eighth, as far as just the blade itself. You can see it's a very stout blade. And the handguard also rounds up a little bit. And as far as the overall length, you'll see even the length of my arm. I believe we measured this about 41, 41 and 3 eighths, just about that. So it's, that's a huge sword. But you gotta also take into consideration if you're an armored knight and you have something like this, you also have a large shield. And you gotta think too, you're not just fighting, you're not just fighting swords. If you're fighting spears, you're gonna want some range and you're gonna want a lot of protection on the high line and also on the low line as well. So it's a beautiful sword. Um, another feature that I really enjoyed about it, I kind of mentioned it before, was the handguard that slightly sweeps up. I really like that a lot, uh, mostly for aesthetics. Obviously the hand protection is there, covering the wrist and covering the knuckle line. When we come down to the handle, we have this deep brown leather. It may look black, but it is a deep brown for the leather. There we go again, the light. If we come around to the other side of it, yeah, it's it's basically, it's almost seamless. You can see the line a little bit where the leather was brought together. And then the handle is obviously a wood core as well. Another thing that I really like is the Brazil nut pommel. This is just the term we use for it now is Brazil nut pommel. Keeping the hand, you know, very secure with the sword. Something that I really enjoy is a good handle on a blade. You could have the most beautiful blade, you got a bad handle, then, well, that's not gonna feel good. <laughs> kind of like buying a car without seats. <laughs> so let's get some, uh, let's get some panning up and down of this thing. This thing is pretty incredible. So Peter Johnson is the one that does all the research and development of these blades for Albion. Uh, I've never met Peter Johnson before, but I will say that he does incredible work. Uh, his, uh, his time and effort that's putting these blades is greatly appreciated. And uh, I'm fortunate enough for working at Cult of Athena to be able to check out a lot of the physical research that he's done with these blades, these recreations. So this is definitely really awesome. 
I will say, uh, not only is this blade really long, but it's pretty damn heavy. It's about two pounds, I believe 15 ounces. And you feel the point of percussion, of course is gonna be toward the upper third of the blade, but you actually feel it closer to, mm, somewhat closer to the middle, somewhat like a Viking sword. Not that you'd wanna really compare a Viking sword to a Crusader sword. <laughs> but um, as far as the feel in the hand, especially with the short handle, you can see my hand wraps around the entirety of the handle. There's no excess really. It feels like one of some of the older Viking swords, not like the, the Hanwen Godfrey sword that's a little bit more lightweight. This thing is a chopper. And if you have sword and shield, you are, you're doing pretty well for yourself, <laughs> especially to have a blade like this of high status. Um, it's definitely gonna, you know, treat you well. So this is definitely not the quickest blade as far as like initial speed, but this has a lot of power to it. You can feel it in the hand. This blade just wants to hack and chop and go forward. So this also, they also suggest from their research that they've done that this may also be a sword that you would use on horseback, which makes a lot of sense. You have a lot of range when you're slashing or if you were thrusting, you really don't have to do much with the momentum of the horse as well. So regardless, uh, you do have to have a strong grip to, uh, to even hold this in your hand. I mean, my hand, I feel a little bit of fatigue in it just from doing the video, but uh, you'll see it's very secure. That Brazil nut pommel really helps a lot. I'm noticing that in the heel of the hand. Really pretty incredible on this. Uh, no cut testing with this one uh, due to the fact that this one is not mine. This is more of a tabletop review. So if you have this one, or if you have other Albions that you'd like to see reviewed that we may have in stock, usually they're made to order because we don't keep a whole lot of stock in them, but on the off chance that we do, leave a comment below of your favorite Albion sword in this video. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video, and I'll talk to you soon.